Welcome to Unveiled Living. My name is Tracy Lee Padilla. I am so thankful you joined us today. I really believe that what I'm going to share here is going to be pivotal in someone's life that might need to hear a part of my story and what I've gone through. Back in 2012, when I went through my divorce, it was something that I did not expect or never even fathomed that I would walk through something like that. And I'm sure that some of you can relate as well. But one of the things that happened in my life when I went through that was it shook my faith to a core. It, it, it shook me in a sense that I didn't stop walking with God, but I struggled for a couple of years with one particular word, and that word was trust. I had always lived my life trusting in the Lord, always lived my life walking in faith with the Lord, but going through what I went through and, and walking through that whole dark, dark, dark season of my life, I really felt like, Lord, where were you? Where were you in this? And, and how could, you know, the typical what we do, how could you let me go through something like that? How could you let me go through so much pain? And, and so I struggled. Um, I struggled picking up those pieces of understanding um, th that the Lord would allow someone to walk through what I walked through. So for two years, I kept telling the Lord and I, I never, I kept going to church. I kept remaining faithful in, in that um, and, and in praying and in reading the word. But I can remember so vividly how much it was that I could not trust him because I felt like, well, you know what? I gave you my life and this is what happened. So I think I got this. I think I'm gonna handle this now on my own. Yet I'm gonna keep you here. I'm gonna keep you in the passenger seat, but you know, I'm not gonna let you drive because I don't wanna live my life without you, but I can't trust you. And I remember many times when I would be driving home from work, and I mean, I'd be crying out to the Lord and I can remember pounding my fist on the steering wheel. And I remember saying this, Lord, I'm not leaving you. I can't live my life without you. Please don't leave me. I just can't trust you right now. And you know what? God understood that. God understood that difficulty that I had. He knows us more than we know ourselves. So it didn't surprise him that I was struggling and trusting him. But you know what? I kept faithful. I kept doing I kept going to church. I didn't make every decision right, I will tell you that. I was not seeking him in all areas of my life because I didn't trust him, but I would and refused to not let go of him because I really believed that there would be a day that would come that I would fully be able to trust him again. And that time came March of 2014. You're talking a couple of years. I walked afraid of trusting in the Lord. But a couple of years later in March, my kids and I were going to a really, really good church in Johnson City called Calvary Church. And I remember the pastor one day began to preach about the story of Joseph and God literally showed up right there in that moment in my life. He revealed to me that the time that I, these last two years, it was like a waiting room. The Lord knew that I needed time to, to have some healing take place in my life. And I needed time to, for me to know in my human mind that this wasn't God's fault. God didn't cause all of that pain in my life. It wasn't his doing, I'm gonna just bring this strife. It wasn't him, but he knew that I needed that time. And the pastor was preaching about being in the waiting room, how Joseph was in the waiting room when he was put in prison all those years. That was a waiting room. You talk about having a challenge of faith when the Lord had spoken things to you and then yet you go to prison and you're just sitting there and nothing's happening. That's a waiting room that I, I don't even, I wouldn't even want to walk through. I don't even think I could do it like Joseph did. But the Lord showed me in those two years, it was a waiting room. But then God revealed himself so beautifully that once you get past the waiting room, he's on the other side to bring you the healing and to bring you the life that you've been asking and praying for, for the Lord to give you that strength. So, so then let's fast forward about four weeks later. There was a verse at that time that I could not read, and it was one of my absolute favorite verses that I always loved. And it was Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. But at this particular time, in those two years, I didn't read it, I didn't go to it, I just couldn't because I knew my heart would not agree with what the scripture was saying. So I just stayed away from it. 
But I knew that I was coming to a point that March and that April that I needed to make a decision for me and my children because we stayed local. We didn't move. We stayed in that area a couple of years after my divorce. But I felt like I needed to be around family, but I was so afraid. I cannot tell you how afraid I was. But this particular day in April, and it's still like it makes me cry just thinking about it, I remember opening up my Bible a red Bible that my kids gave me that I love. It's called the Mom Bible. I remember feeling brave enough for the first time to open up to Proverbs chapter three and start reading in verse five. And I can remember that particular morning when I did, I was shaking. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was shaking because in that moment, the Lord knew and I knew that I was choosing to trust Him again. I was choosing to lay down my fears. I was choosing to lay down my past. I was choosing to lay down what I had gone through in my divorce. And putting that all aside, and I was choosing to look back up into my father's eyes and say, I trust you because I can't do this on my own. And that particular day, I read these words, shaking, with tears running down my face. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. But you know what, I love this part. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So that day, I chose to trust God again. Within about a couple of weeks, I took my kids out. We went to Mellow Mushroom and there, I shared with them what I felt the Lord was laying on my heart that we needed to move to Florida. It was amazing their response because they were like, let's do it, it's right. Even my daughter knowing that that meant she would end up in a different high school her senior year didn't phase her. She felt like it was the right decision. And I have to say this, I'm gonna fast forward. So we moved to Florida, July of 2014 that year. I had just enough money to make that move happen. And here's the crazy thing about it. When I went to enroll my kids in school, the end of July, Faith would have been a senior and Jacob was going into his ninth grade year. We found out that in Tennessee, the way that the credit system works and the way that the credit system works in Florida are different. So when we went to enroll her for her senior year of high school, they said, Faith, you are only lacking one credit in English to graduate. That's it. And we were like, what? So she said, so we're not gonna enroll you in your senior year of high school. We're going to enroll you in your freshman year of college. Do you wanna talk about like seeing your daughter, you'd be so elated because she was so ready to move on. She had already had it in her heart. She wanted to be a nurse. And the fact that she didn't have to go, she didn't want to go to a different high school, but she was so willing to do it. But God provided something that we had no idea that had we not made that move, she actually got to start her freshman year of college that year instead of her senior year of high school. And God knew that. So what I wanna say with this is that if you've gone through a divorce and you're struggling and trusting in the Lord, and it could be something else. You could have a husband in a hospital right now. You could have um, financial, you could have lost your job. It doesn't matter what the situation is. This verse applies to all of us at any given moment and time in our life. I want to encourage you, and I can boldly say as I'm sitting here, that that was the best decision I made that day was to truly surrender my trust into the Lord's hands again that day because it led me to where I am today. Has my path been perfect these last eight, nine years? No, it hasn't. We're human. We're still going to make human decisions and, and mistakes. But God has been so faithful, so faithful. I could go on and on and on to tell you how faithful He has been and has blown my mind at his provision, taking care of not only my life, but in my children's lives. So I wanna encourage you, if this is where you are today, it's okay, I've been there too. But I want to remind you that as you continue to walk, keep moving forward, 
keep taking those steps forward. Don't look back. Just keep moving forward and keep going to God's word. And when that day does come and you're ready to fully trust in him, I can promise you this. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for that moment. He's waiting for that day. And he actually knows when it is. And when you do that, he will release his freedom into your life like you've never known before.